in trying to get the details here, I didn't go alone. To better assess the behind-the-scenes nitty-gritty, I sent out a short survey to a range of developers who released games this past year. And this year, I had more collaborators than ever representing a wide range of genres and styles, and everything from tiny developers all the way up to the people behind some of this year's biggest indies. And to get an even broader perspective, I also distributed a shorter mini-survey to capture the opinions of current and aspiring developers still hoping to make it big. Between the mini-survey, the full survey, and some short interviews with more established developers, I heard back from over 50 people and groups for this year's article. But before we get to what they had to say, let's take a look at the state of the market overall. The indie market opened 2024 with a hell of a track start. Anticipation was strong for Hades 2, of course, but there was also plenty of buzz for the likes of Manor Lords and Body Cam. Then Pal World Drops proves to be a bona fide phenomenon, making a third of a billion dollars and dominating the most played games list for the first quarter of the year. This was followed by more huge successes, with games like Enshrouded and Last Epoch and the announcement of sequels to indie heavy hitters like Slay the Spire, Wizard of Legend, and Hyperlight Drifter. It was clearly a good year for some, and omitting some general weirdness, such as the mid-year avalanche of play-to-earn clickers, it was also a strong year for the games themselves. But did that translate into a good year for the typical developer? The people with whom I spoke weren't exactly in agreement on this. Respondents to the mini-survey gave a wide range of responses when I asked about their overall experiences, with the mean being slightly below average. And the full surveys returned similar results. A majority said that the market was good for the kind of games that they make, but a similar majority said that the market was overall bad and getting worse. There is a reason to lament the state of indie development. To get a perspective of a group that's been through the process, I spoke with Malavasi Freddy of Draw Me a Pixel, the group behind the 2020 metafiction hit There Is No Game Wrong Dimension. He says, Competition has never been so fierce, and the recent financial failures of major groups like Embracer could reshuffle the deck in the near future. We can imagine, for example, budgets being regularly revised downwards and or projects being halted before their end. These conditions are likely to put smaller studios in a precarious situation and lead to further studio closures in the 2024 and 2025 period. Of course, no one starts a big project without at least some hope that it will succeed. Perhaps these oddly contradictory results are simply a product of developers being realistic while also anticipating better times. Indeed, even many of those who don't necessarily see 2024 as the best year for indies do see things improving in years to come. For example, Remy Su of Sunset Traveler says, I am optimistic for the future. It seems like 2024 was a flagpole year for indies where more and more people are realizing a huge percentage of their playtime is taken up by indies. That's exciting. Someone said to me they're hoping for an indie renaissance. I hope for that too, and I hope the players are there for it. For others, such as Stefan Knightsku of Tiny Trinket, rough times can be an opportunity in their own right. He says, The following two to three years, I expect to see a constant decrease of quality games being released as many studios are closing or downsizing or focusing on existing IPs. This will leave a lot of space for new IPs and new games to be visible, for those able to survive the period and find a way to preserve financial stability. According to Duelist of Eden developer Thomas Moon Kong, small developers should be fine, but I think there's a gigantic skill gap between the developers that are successful and the ones that aren't. It also depends on how on-trend you are. If you have an idea that fits right in but is also unique, then you'll have a good time. And certainly, the type of game makes a significant difference, so 